<clears throat> Your Honor, opposing counsel, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'd like to thank you this evening for taking the time out with us today to hear the case. And we ask that you hold on a little bit longer. We know that it's been a long one. This case is about a man, good old Whit Bowman, who has constantly throughout his life strived to find connections, roots to the community. Who thought he found a root in his friend Cameron Poole? who was wrong about that route, and it turned out to be something that was rotted and nasty. Cameron Poole chose to make his own decisions. And though these decisions were extremely bad, what is worse is that he got Mr. Whip Bowman caught up in, in his tangled web along with him. My client today is here, brought up on four counts two counts of robbery in the first degree, and two counts of robbery in the second degree. It is the prosecution's burden to prove that my client is guilty of these charges beyond a reasonable doubt, and they have failed to do that. In order to prove that my client, Mr. Whit Bowman, was guilty of robbery in the first degree, they have some legal elements to prove. They must prove that on August 30th, 2012, Mr. Whip Bowman, either acting alone or in complicity with another, used or threatened to use immediate physical force upon Miss Haley Floyd, and that he used that force or threatened to use it with the intent of committing a theft. He also, they also must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that my client was in possession of, was armed with a deadly weapon or that he caused physical injury to Miss Haley Floyd, or that he used or threatened to use immediate physical force with the dangerous instrument. They have failed to prove all of these. They have failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that some of these legal elements were committed. On, you have heard the testimony of Miss Haley Floyd. She has testified today that in fact it was Cameron Poole who came up to her at the ticket booth and threatened her with a knife. She was at knife point scared for her life, but it wasn't at the hand of my client. It wasn't because of Whit Bowman that she was threatened with a knife. Whit Bowman was operating a ride, which she has testified to. She's also testified that she doesn't think that there's any way that Whit Bowman could have been involved with this because she had such a great relationship with Whit. She mentioned that he was a good guy and that everyone liked him around the amusement park. They have not proved, the prosecution has not proven beyond a reasonable doubt that my client was armed with this dangerous instrument, nor have they proved that he threatened to use it. The prosecution is going to try and fool you with terms like complicity. But in order to prove complicity, they have a few elements that they also must show. They have not shown that my um, client engaged in um, uh, conspiracy to commit the theft with Cameron Poole. Why? Because they can't even show Cameron Poole today. They have not proved that my client gave uh Mr. Poole the knife. Why? Because they can't even produce the knife for you today, nor can they produce Mr. Cameron Poole. They have not met up with their legal duty. They have not proven beyond a reasonable doubt that my client is guilty of robbery in the first degree in the case of Haley Floyd. Now, they also charged my client with robbery in the second degree. In order to prove robbery in the second degree, they must show that beyond a reasonable doubt, on August 30th, 2012, my client, acting alone or in complicity with another, <clears throat> threatened Miss um, Floyd or used physical force in order in a with the intent of committing a theft. They have not shown beyond a reasonable doubt, that my client knew that Mr. Cameron, Mr. Cameron Poole was planning on robbing Miss Haley Floyd at knife point. 
You have heard the testimony today of Mr. Whit Bowman, who said that, yes, he was in contact with Mr. Cameron Poole, but that was only so that he could open up the secret door to let Mr. Poole in when he was late from work. You have heard testimonies from other um, ride operators who have testified to the type of atmosphere that was there at the amusement park. It was one where the owner was, let's say, cheap. He was constantly trying to figure out a way to cut a corner, to not pay his employees, to punish them. So when Cameron simply came in late, he knew that he couldn't just walk through the front door. And Mr. Whit Bowman, believing that he had a strong friend in Cameron, decided to open up the secret door. Mr. Whit admits that that was wrong, that he should have just told Cameron Poole to, to go through and deal with his consequences on his own. But he was trying to be a good friend, and today he sees the consequences of his actions. He, <clears throat> the prosecution has also charged my client, with robbery in the first degree for Mr. Winston Thomas. Mr. Winston Thomas, the police, the, um, the security guard at the park was indeed hit by the ride. He was hit by the Tunnel of Terror ride as he ran towards Mr. Cameron Poole, who everyone acknowledges was the one who held Miss Haley Floyd up at ninth point. This is a series of unfortunate events, but they all start with Cameron Poole, who was the master of it all. He made the decision to hold up Miss Haley Floyd, and he also made the decision to run. And now it is very unfortunate that as Mr. Winston Thomas attempted to keep his park safe, he ran after um, Mr. Cameron Poole and in doing that he pulled out his gun and he shot towards an open crowd full of amusement park goers, attendees. When he shot that gun, Mr. Bowman was extremely shaken up and scared. He had never been in a situation where a gun was drawn, there was a loud commotion, there was a bunch of attendees and as he was not prepared for such an emergency situation, he pressed the wrong lever. Yes, there has been testimony that he's done this ride over and over and again. And yes, there has been testimony that there were two buttons, a stop button, a go button, and a lever that means for maintenance. But also, you have to, we have to take into account, into account that during emergency situations, one does not always think logically. One does not always go with everything that they've done for years and years or for months and months, what they've been trained to do. When you're shaken up and when you're around a crowd and when there's a lot of hectic things going on, you make a mistake sometimes. And Mr. Bowman is still dealing with the repercussions of his mistake. He mistakenly pressed that lever and he mistakenly turned off the machine, the lights to the machine, while the machine kept going, and that machine is the machine that Mr. Winston Thomas ran into. He was not armed with any dangerous or deadly weapons. He was not, he had no intent of stealing from Miss Haley Floyd, and therefore he had no intent of helping Cameron to just rush by and to end up with a physical injury to Mr. Winston Thomas, this, these events just spiraled out of control and he found himself in, in an extremely compromising position. Mr. Bowman has testified to the fact that, and others have testified that he did not run. In fact, he was so confused, he just stood there. You have to ask yourself, would someone who committed a crime and who just injured someone else stay at the scene of the crime so that the police can find them? No, they would not. Mr. Whitman, Mr. Whit had no intention of ever, ever uh, committing theft from Miss Haley Floyd at the ticket booth, and he had no intentions of ever 
um, allowing and aiding Mr. Cameron Poole to commit that theft and to run away by turning off the machine. He simply was caught in a in a frenzy as there was a lot of commotion going on and he feels extremely horrible about the faithful action of pulling that lever. You have also heard the testimony of Mr. Um, Charlie Kamalski, who has testified to hearing the phone conversation between Mr. Cameron Poole and Mr. Webb. He has heard in that conversation that Mr. Cameron Poole was saying, I did it, I did it. And while Mr. Witt is like, what did you do? What, what is going on? He had no idea that this would ever spiral out of control. Mr. Charlie was the limousine driver. He was the one who drove Cameron Poole away. So this shows that Cameron Poole knew what he was going to do and had intentions of leaving the scene. Don't you think that Mr. Witt would also have been in that car if he had intended to rob Miss Haley Floyd? But he didn't leave in that car. The events that took place were horrifying. It is horrible that Mr. Winston Thomas got hurt. And it is also horrible that Miss Haley Floyd has to deal with the trauma of being held up at knife point. But this is not Mr. Witt's fault. The prosecution today and the police department are trying to make up for their wrongs to society by using my client, Mr. Witt, as a scapegoat. They understand that they can't produce Mr. Cameron Poole, who has, who has been seen by everyone as committing the crime. They also have admitted that they can't even find the knife that he supposedly had held up Miss Haley Floyd with. They are ashamed that they cannot do their job properly. And today they are trying to put, place all the blame on my client, Mr. Witt Bowman. Looking at all the testimony today, you have seen that they have not proven beyond a reasonable doubt that my client is guilty of any of these charges. And because of that, you will find my client, Mr. Witt Bowman, innocent of all counts. Thank you.